Hey guys, Pastor Ben here with another review and reflection. Today I want to talk about The Pastor, a memoir written by Eugene Peterson. Uh, this is a book I uh, just picked up a couple weeks ago, I had the chance to read through recently, so I wanted to share uh, some of my thoughts uh, about the book. Uh, many of you may be familiar with Eugene Peterson. He uh, passed away just a couple of years ago, but he was an American pastor and wrote a number of books, a lot of which have to do with pastoral life and imagination, but the book that he is most well known for is called The Message, which is his, uh, he would call it a translation, I would call it a paraphrase of the Bible into contemporary American English. Um, so The Message has been widely read and used by many, many people, and Eugene Peterson uh, has become very well known because of that. Now, if you know me uh, as a pastor and know kind of the church context I'm coming from, I'm a minister in the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Um, Eugene Peterson was also a Presbyterian pastor, but he was not OPC. He was a pastor in the PCUSA, the mainline, very liberal uh, American church. Um, you'll know that where I'm coming from and where he's coming from on many issues couldn't be further apart. In fact, you may be surprised even to see that this is a book I picked up. Um, but let me explain a little bit about how I came to this book, and um, and then we'll kind of dive into some of my thoughts and reviews. So this was actually recommended in uh, the OPC's denominational magazine, John Meather, who uh, you OPC nerds will know uh, was the historian for the OPC for many years. Camden Busey has now stepped into that role. But John Meather had a book, um, or had an article, in which he mentioned this book and said, uh, you know, it may not seem like a book that you would expect an OPC guy to recommend, but he said I would encourage people to read it, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. I'll pick it up and uh, and give it a read. Um, I'd also been exposed to Peterson's kind of pastoral theology, pastoral imagination work uh, from another OPC pastor friend who had recommended his little book, The Contemplative Pastor. Um, so I'd had enough exposure to know that even though um, I'm not coming at things the same way that Peterson does on many issues, and that'll come out a little bit in this book. I'll mention some of those instances. There's still a lot to learn from, especially in terms of how to think and function as a pastor, because Peterson uh, was very sensitive, I think, to some of the um, dysfunctions of American church life and can be a helpful conversation partner to, to get us thinking about what's wrong about how we do pastoral work and ministry and what we can do to be more biblical and more faithful. So this is a good example for me of um, conversing uh, through writing and reading with someone that you're not on the same page with, but that very difference can be a sharpening kind of thing. So anyways, did find it an interesting read, but let me go, go through kind of what he covers, how he approaches things, and then I'll list some strengths and weaknesses that I found in working through the book myself as a pastor. So first off, this is a memoir of his life, and he's doing it particularly with the question of, how did I become a pastor? That's the question he kind of wants to answer. And so he goes through his life, um, but this is not a biography or an autobiography in kind of the conventional sense. He does broadly move chronologically. You know, he starts with his birth and upbringing in Montana. That's where he's from. Uh, the uh, um, small town, Kalispell, I think is the name of the town in Montana. His family were... Um, Norwegian immigrants who came over, and um, so he talks about that upbringing and some of his family members and things like that. Uh, he goes to uh, his seminary training in New York City, uh, his graduate studies in Baltimore, and then he went into the ministry and planted and pastored a church in Bel Air, Maryland, which is not terribly far away from where I live in Virginia, um, for many, many years, and then retired taught various places kind of part-time, but I think his main residence was back at the family home in Montana. So that's kind of the, the progression of his life and the stories that he tells kind of broadly track along that, that time frame. However, this is one of the things that's interesting about Peterson. Um, he, he has a poet's imagination and a poet's mind, and he loves to tell stories. And so this is a memoir that's really uh, composed of uh, dozens of stories that he tells about different people, different moments, different encounters, different turning points in the span of his life. So this book is uh, about 320 pages. There are 40 chapters. So a lot of the chapters are very short. Uh, sometimes um, 
one doesn't necessarily seem to follow the other. It's very kind of, it's like sitting down with your grandparent and them kind of telling you the story of their life. They're not going to go through like a historian would. They're just going to tell you about different scenes they remember. And that's something that I find, um, I found very delightful. I really enjoyed it. He's a good writer. He portrays people well. It's engaging. I think some people might find that a bit frustrating or difficult if you're not braced for that. So I would just say, come into it that way. Approach it like you're sitting and listening to um, an older pastor or, or grandparent or something telling you stories from their life. And as you piece those stories together, you start to get the story of their life. I think that's really what Peterson is doing kind of at, a, at an artistic level. And he does it very well. Um, one of the things I like about that is that uh, I can put myself in his shoes. I can envision people that I know that are like the people he's describing or situations I've been in that are uh, analogous to what he has experienced. And so it gives that um, interesting kind of foil to, you know, the experience of the reader uh, as well. Um, he also frames this very much as kind of his own journey of discovering how to be a pastor. Um, one of the things that was interesting to me is he talks about how in his context growing up and in his context and even in terms of seminary, the professors in seminary generally were not had not been pastors. There was very little instruction on pastoral work or ministry. Um, that was interesting for me because that's the complete opposite of my experience. Uh, the seminary that I went to and the seminaries kind of in my circles um, typically require the professors to have served as pastors for some length of time. And it was quite common for men to go from ministry into academia or academia into pastoral ministry. And there was a lot of back and forth between those two spheres. And the academic and theological training I got in the seminaries was always uh, given in kind of a pastoral key, I would say. Um, and so that made me very grateful for that because that was obviously not something that Peterson had experienced. And I imagine that's something that if you go out more broadly into American church life, perhaps it's not um, as common as it is in my own circle. So that was something that I was grateful uh, to, um, to have received. Um, but Peterson did not really have that. And so he describes how in his seminary training and his graduate work, he got you know, deep academic work, but then the work of actually being a pastor was often either not spoken to at all, or if it was spoken to, it was really kind of translating American business principles into the church. Um, and he talks about, you know, the experience of kind of asking around in his denomination for, you know, what, what would you recommend for to read about, you know, how to be a good pastor? And everyone recommended this one guy who was like, you know, the best in the nation, and so he started reading some of his books, and he really wasn't very impressed. He went and listened to the guy speak and still had questions and found him afterward and started kind of pressing in and comes to find out, you know, the guy had, had basically had no pastoral experience, um, hardly at all. I think he had served like a year or two years as a youth pastor or something at some point. But he had really made a ministry out of telling men how to do ministry without being a minister himself. And Peterson just saw that as deeply flawed. And so that's one of the things that I really appreciate about the book is that Peterson is very sensitive to the way in which Christianity can be, uh, can capitulate to American culture, our pragmatism, our result, personality driven um, uh, agendas, our kind of, you know, five year plans for where we want to be and what we want to do. There's a very kind of worldly, pragmatic um, tendency that uh, many of us as Americans have, and I, I put myself in that category. It's easy to fall into those kinds of things. We get excited about buildings. We get excited about uh, big congregations. We get excited about big budgets. Um, but one of the things that Peterson stresses, and this is, I think, a real strength and encouragement to me as a young minister, just kind of starting off, um, is that he, he, he stresses that as pastors, we're not called to pastor numbers. We're called to pastor names. We're called to know people. And in fact, there's a liability in growing your church to the biggest that it can be and growing your church beyond the scale of a real community. And there's a danger that American pastors in particular can have of wanting to view whatever call they have right now as a stepping stone to the next call that they want to have. So they think of their calling in terms of a career. We'll even use that language interchangeably. We shouldn't, but we do. And Sometimes pastors can think, oh yeah, I'm at this little church, but it, it's really just to kind of give me some experience and then I'll go to a mid-sized church and then I'll go to a big church and maybe I can be a conference speaker, maybe I can write books, maybe I can get degrees. And we start thinking about ministry really as if it's our own little kingdom to build. 
And I love the way that Peterson, who's obviously a very intelligent guy, you know, I, I disagree with a lot of the positions that he takes. I don't love the message <laughs> as a as a paraphrase. I don't view it as a translation. I would view it as a paraphrase. And I think um, there are problems with it. Uh, maybe another video for another time. Um, but even with that, he's a very intelligent guy. It's very obvious. And he could be a professor. He could have uh, made a career writing. But he really tethered himself for the bulk of his career to pastoral ministry in a small to mid-sized church in Maryland. Um, and there's something in that that uh, is to be admired. And I, I find encouragement in that as a pastor, that um, we're not here for a career. We're, we're here to pursue a vocation, a calling that God has in our lives. And we should um, seek to be faithful and to always be personal and pastoral as pastors, not professionals. Um, and others have sounded these notes as well, but Peterson does a good job of um, not only telling you what that looks like, but because he's doing this as a memoir, because he's describing it through different stories and interactions and conversations that he has, you get to see what it looks like um, as well. So those are a couple of things that I really appreciated about the book. He helps you to kind of be aware of some of the dangers that our culture presents for Christianity. You know, we can see that when, when the gospel goes to some foreign uh, nation or some tribal culture, and we see, okay, there's things in that culture that resonate with the gospel, and there's things that are in tension with the gospel. But what we can sometimes fail to, to, to recognize is that, and this is what like Leslie Newbigin and others would help us see as well, is that that's true of our culture too. Right? There are things within American culture that resonate with the gospel, and there are things that are in tension with the gospel. And I think Peterson is a good guy to read if you want to have your eyes open to some of those points of tension. So I appreciated that. I appreciate the emphasis on um, personal ministry, humility, dying to self, prayer. Um, and one other thing I'll mention, I really appreciated the emphasis he puts on the pastor as a witness. And um, I think when I thought of the pastor as a witness, I've thought maybe in, in, in one dimension, but it's actually a two-dimensional um, kind of thing. So one dimension of the pastor being a witness, of course, is the pastor witnessing to the truth, witnessing to the gospel, um, whether that's through personal evangelism, whether that's through uh, pulpit work and, and preaching, whether that's teaching and instructing people. Pastors have the privilege of witnessing uh, to the truth of what God has revealed about himself. And I think that's something that my own context and tradition has helped to kind of ingrain in me, that that's part of what I'm called to do, part of what I'm privileged to do as a minister of the gospel. But there's another dimension to pastoral ministry, and I've kind of found myself experiencing this more and more as I'm just getting into these first few years of ministry. And reading Eugene Peterson's memoir Help me to kind of have some categories to think about what it is I've been experiencing. And that's that um, as a pastor, you're positioned in a unique way. You get to see people's suffering. You get to see people's joy. You get to see people serving each other uh, and hurting each other. You know, the whole gamut, right, in a way that a lot of people don't get to see, right? We come to church on Sunday, people, you know, look cleaned up and put together together. Um, but as a pastor, you, you get to see kind of what's going on underneath the surface, what's going on behind the scenes. And that can be a deeply encouraging thing as you look out and see people that, you know, probably are not on people's radar screens, but they are serving, they're praying, they're encouraging, they're giving, um, uh, they're really showing Christ to others. And, and you get to see a little bit into that. And that's so delightful. Um, uh, but you also get to see people that are hurting and people that have been, that are hurting others, um, and that can be a painful experience too. But that's part of what a pastor is privileged to do and is called to do. That, you know, my job as a pastor, this is how I think Eugene Peterson would put it, is not to kind of, you know, control people and get them on the conveyor belt and move them along. But is part, part of what I'm called to do is to just walk alongside them as God is at work in their life. And I get to be a witness to what God is doing in their life. Um, and Peterson has a good... Uh, um, kind of ex exploration of some of those themes. So a lot there for an OPC pastor, a conservative, evangelical, reformed guy to learn from this uh, mainline pastor. However, as you read this book, it's very clear he is uh, a mainline pastor. Um, maybe one of the most uh, obvious examples of that is that he kind of goes out of his way to um, 
you know, make a point of speaking in a kind of egalitarian way about pastoral ministry. Um, I believe that the Bible is very clear that um, uh, pastors, elders, deacons are uh, to be godly, ordained, qualified men, um, and that in God's providence and according to his wisdom, that's those are offices that are restricted to men, not because women are second-class citizens, but simply because God has a different calling there. Uh, but Peterson is coming from a mainline context, and actually he tells the story. His mother uh, was not ordained as a pastor, but he grew up in a kind of Pentecostal context, and she would go out and like preach. She had her own little church until somebody told her women shouldn't be uh, preaching in that way, and then she stopped the services, which Eugene Peterson sees as a very bad thing. Um, and uh, so throughout the book, he talks about pastors as you know, he or she, and he'll talk about, you know, doing retreats to train young pastors, and some are men and some are women, and so that kind of runs through the book. He doesn't go out of his way to have big explorations of those things, so he's not giving the theology for where he's coming from, but you can see where he's coming from reflected in, in that book. And there are a few other kind of things here or there, things he'll say about, um, you know, feminism or, you know, things like that, that you can tell he's coming from a mainline context. But overall, um, I don't know exactly what his views were on the doctrine of Scripture, kind of theologically, but what seems to come across is a very high view of Scripture, a, a reverence for Scripture, a, and a real recognition that the language and the story of Scripture should shape and inform our own lives as Christians. And he, you know, his training was in philology and biblical languages, and so he's thinking with that kind of mindset, and he, he's, he's eating those words and taking them in and letting them shape him. And so I think that's where a lot of the, the good meat comes from, is that uh, for all the differences in theology, he's been very saturated in the story of the Bible, and that helps him to think biblically when it comes to uh, thinking through what does a pastoral imagination look like. So um, overall, it's a book I would recommend with those reservations in place, recognizing that he's coming from a different context. So I view this as kind of a this is a conversation partner, someone that you're not on the same page with, but that'll help you to think critically and carefully about things. It's probably going to be most interesting to um, men who are pastors who are serving in that field, um, but it may be of interest for others as well. Again, he has a lot of stories. Some are really uh, touching. Some are really funny. Um, they're all interesting. Uh, just I just find it interesting to hear people's stories and to hear their life stories. So this is this is basically doing that. You get to sit down with somebody and just hear them tell stories from their life. And so um, if that's the kind of thing you enjoy, you may find it profitable as well. So those are my thoughts on Eugene Peterson's book, The Pastor, uh, A Memoir.